Thank you, everyone. It's really a thrill and pleasure to be here in Malmo, and this conference already has been so inspiring today. Um, I would like to uh, mention that today is actually the American holiday, Labor Day, and I feel this great synergy that I'm today also speaking about workers and work in the city, um, and this holiday was actually founded in around 1884, um, by workers, laborers, who marched on Union Square in New York City to um, promote their work and their dedication to their jobs. So in a way, that's very much what this project of mine, Vertical Urban Factory, is about. It's about how do we make things in cities, where do we make things in cities, and, and how can we continue this in an equitable way, um, acknowledging the worker, their pride in their work, but also providing places of production um, that, that are comfortable for them to work in. And here at this conference, we're talking a lot about digital technology and the tech workplace, but I'm very interested in that of the material workplace as well. So the Vertical Urban Factory is a project that really started as an architecture studio, then became an exhibition that traveled around the world, Lausanne, Toronto, Detroit, um, Paris, and London, and then became a book um, which is now, actually I just found out on Friday, is really sold out. We're going to go into a second printing. And it's really expanded also into um, a work I'm doing now, filming uh, factory workers in Philadelphia um, and getting their stories, listening to them and their tales and the fact that they really do care about their work and they do have pride in this. So going back, um, some of you might know, the Lingotto factory, it's the Fiat factory in Torino, built in 1926. And this factory was important because it was vertical, but also because it became a spectacle in the city. It was a crown in the middle of the urban environment, and a ca the car was finished on the roof, um, and then uh, went around the, the track so that people could, could test it. And this idea of the vertical factory in the city is something that I identified, because it is, is so dominant, but no one really saw it as a typology in the history of architecture. And I started to look at these types um, to see um, how they both were designed structurally in terms of the engineering, but also the fact that these factories influence many of the great modernist architects, such as Le Corbusier, and, and they became something that uh, epitomized modernism and epitomized technology and, and this kind of machinic design and machinic desire of the early technological age. But, but what has happened since is that factories have really moved out of cities. We know this, we see offshoring, we see uh, the, the movement of especially large-scale manufacturing to other places that from the Western world. And I started to question why have these moved away? And we know because it's cheaper labor, it's lower cost labor, um, it's, it's the fact that um, these spaces are really no longer available in cities. And when we think about this fact that the, the factory worker then has no place to go, and these skills then become gradually lost, but also because cities start to see a need for higher end, cooler residential spaces, I say that manufacturing has also been zoned out of cities, right? We're not leaving a place for manufacturing to return if it cares to return. So because so many areas that were formerly manufacturing are being converted to residential, when a company does want to come back, when, let's say, a new product is, wants to be made here in Malmo, where are they going to go? Um, so one of the things that I've been looking at is what methods are there for manufacturing to return to cities? Where can it reside? And maybe there's kind of a new way of putting factories together with other things in a hybridization. Um, we, we love now these new hybrid apartment buildings with cafes. What about a new kind of combination with manufacturing as well? So one, some of these ideas that I'd like to show you today include that of this industrial hybrid. And one reason we can have these industrial hybrids is because manufacturing has been reduced. It's smaller, it's flexible, it's cleaner, it's greener. 
right? And because we don't have these belching smokestacks anymore, um, we don't have the big right, shipbuilding right here in Malmo anymore, um, it can kind of integrate itself and weave back into the cityscape in what we could call a neo-cottage industry. So the image on the left is kind of the, the large-scale manufacturing site that we know from Albert Kahn um, in America building factories for large machinery. But on the right, what we see is the smaller-scale manufacturing, the fact that we can now make things in smaller spaces. You can make things in your home. And I love to tell the story that all these little boxes started arriving at my apartment, you know, every week, every week. And I said to my husband, what, what is going on? And a month later, you know, there was his fixie bicycle, right? He could make it at home. So we're starting to see this with many products and kind of a new entrepreneurial culture where, where people can make things in their home. And, and because of this idea of technology shifting scales too, right? We have the large robots, but we also have these small robots. We have robots like MakerBots and robots where you can do 3D printing. Um, there's numerous science fiction stories where you, know, you can make your own products at home in a Philip K. Dick novel. What if we could do this? Right? So we have to think about manufacturing differently. And, and the last people who understand what's happened are often the city planning departments in our cities, right? They don't understand that manufacturing has changed, that we can bring it back, that we can have it here, but it's a different form. It might not employ as many people, but the kinds of things that can be made in cities are small things, like I always love to show the diamond in the top image. It's the diamond district in New York, right? In the diamond district, you're making a diamond is the highest value, smallest product you could ever imagine, right? So diamonds are perfect. We see them in New York, we see them in Rotterdam, we see them in Antwerp. So these kinds of almost luxury goods are those that are being made in cities. Furniture, fashion, food, all things that relate to probably a lot of you in the audience who are making things, designing things, prototyping them, those are the kinds of things we need in cities. So some cities, such as Paris, have actually created spaces for factories. They've made something called Hotel Industriel, and these buildings are multi-use spaces with multiple factories inside them, and they've been doing this since 1985. It's one of the best models, new buildings for new manufacturing. Other situations are those where manufacturers are just local people. In Africa, this is Johannesburg, where they've taken a existing office building and they've inserted small manufacturers. Uh, these are curtain makers working in their local shops in a kind of informal manufacturing. Another method is that of the nonprofit. The Greenpoint Manufacturing Design Center has received a lot of attention. They're now renovating their sixth building, but they started with one building, furniture makers, who needed a place to work, and they got this building almost for free in Brooklyn and started to renovate it and started to populated with all kinds of manufacturers and now even high-tech manufacturers. This is a paint company that uses high-tech machinery for their factory. Or another way is just a group of individuals, you know, kind of you'd call them real estate developers, people passionate about making in cities. Um, this is in Philadelphia, my hometown. Globe Dye was an old textile dyeing company and they've transformed it into a multi-use factory space. Here we see the typical kind of you know, young, almost hipster worker doing uh, preservation work in the factory building. And then another method that we're seeing that's starting to um, take hold is something that's really old, but no one's embraced in the way that we could today to repopulate cities with manufacturing, and that is this idea that I've developed called the consumption of production and industrial tourism. We love to see what's going on inside factories. And VW in Dresden is probably one of the best examples of this, this transparent factory. We have to be a little careful of their company rhetoric, because as we know, they were not so transparent. But this idea that you can make a showcase for a factory building and have transparent facades, have part of the conveyor coming through, which is this BMW factory in the bottom image by Zaha Hadid. How do you make this part of the streetscape? or something like a, a small shop 
where you can see what's going on inside. And this relates to the idea of the experience economy. So this is another way that factories can come back inside the buildings. Or here, with a, a garment manufacturer, a fashion designer, Stina Sare, actually from Sweden, who lives in Massachusetts. She puts her worker in the window to attract attention, to capture the eye of the passerby. And so we made this concept for a vertical urban factory in the garment district in New York, which is now endangered again, by making the facades transparent. Just a proposal, just an idea out there, but it's getting attention and gaining traction because we want to make the worker visible. The other method is this idea of industrial commons, something like you know, shared office space, common areas, but let's do it with manufacturing. Let's bring machinery together that's very expensive and have manufacturers, smaller manufacturers, share large machinery, share skills. And this is done in, in places that are like hacker spaces or maker spaces, um, this one in New Jersey, where the workers come together, they pay like a sports club membership, and they can use the machinery and share that in a common area like an open source software, but let's have open, so open source manufacturing. And these are often educational hybrids, right? So this idea of the hybrid is very important in manufacturing today. It's not going to be the single factory standing out in the city. It's going to be combined um, with, say, this is the High Speed Sustainable Manufacturing Institute in East London, where they're training workers, um, as well as innovating new products, having R&D close to the factory floor. And that becomes this key in this relationship of the factory and design. But to do this idea of the vertical urban factory, we have to change the zoning tools. We have to be able to build taller factories. And in most industrial districts, the zoning is just for one-story buildings. How can we allow for taller buildings to have factories on different floors? So this is one proposal we're working on. This is kind of a design concept, a little futuristic. But what if we had multi-story factories again in the city? So to complete this hybrid, we have to look at this idea of working and living together. And I proposed a concept where manufacturing would be on the first ground floors and the, maybe up to the fourth floor of the building. And then in the middle, there could be commercial space. And then on the upper floor, there could be residential. And the residential could cross-subsidize manufacturing. Because the issue in a city like New York or San Francisco or Boston is that it's way too expensive for most manufacturers to rent space. So how do you keep that space reduced in, in the rental fee? And one way is to cross-subsidize. So with students from the University of Leuven last summer, we looked at a real site that the city of New York was proposing as, in terms of how do we create this mix of uses, allowing for manufacturing with um, residential in the building and other uses, and basically, the city um, was inspired by this idea of mine, and they took it further. Um, this, these are student projects, but the project um, is now out for bid. The, the developer's been founded, and there's going to be 1.5 million square feet of, of project combining um, manufacturing run by the GMDC with living. So how, do we, how can we do this? This is one possible way. Uh, an actual project is that in Vancouver. They've really achieved this now. This building's under construction. And then, just in closing, I'd like to point out this potential synergy in all of these hybrids, that we can combine working, living, education in this kind of factory building in the city that's also sustainable. And so, taking into account recycling of water, recycling of heat waste, we can create an entire synergy. And this idea is that of industrial symbiosis, and it really has never been done in cities. Um, Denmark is very well known, Kaldenborg, I'm sure all of you know about it. And I, I, my next project is really to look at that as a model for urban situations, to create this synergy between the factory, the worker, um, the place of making, that of living, and recreation all in one community. And this will create a new sustainable paradigm for manufacturing in our cities for the long-term future. Thank you very much.